Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan here coming to you from my office and right now I'm going to give you a super quick high yield review of the physiology of heart failure. If you understand this, you will be able to answer dozens and dozens of questions about what's going on inside the body of patients who have heart failure. So remember, the primary physiologic disturbance of heart failure is that the cardiac output is low. Patients can have this happen for a multitude of reasons, but for whatever reason, they will always have low cardiac output when there is acute heart failure. So remember, the job of the heart is to empty the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta. But when the cardiac output is low, the left ventricle cannot empty normally. So it fills up with blood, it becomes engorged with blood. And so at the end of diastole, when the left ventricle has filled with blood from the left atrium, it's going to be swollen and filled with extra fluid. And that's going to lead to high pressure in the left ventricle at the end of diastole. So all patients with heart failure and fluid overload are going to have a high LVEDP. And it's super high yield to understand this. Well, when the left ventricle is swollen and engorged with fluid, then the left atrium can't empty normally. So it becomes swollen and engorged with fluid. And so therefore we see a rise in left atrial pressure. And now you get the idea of what I'm doing. We can just go backwards from chamber to chamber and see how all the pressures will rise, okay? So what empties blood into the left atrium? The pulmonary capillaries. So when the left atrial pressure goes up, the pulmonary capillary hydrostatic pressure is going to go up. And so if you think about a pulmonary capillary, which is a tube like this, in heart failure, the hydrostatic pressure in the pulmonary capillary gets high, and that's what drives fluid out into the lung tissue and causes pulmonary edema. All right, well, what feeds blood into the pulmonary capillaries? The pulmonary arteries. So if the capillaries are swollen and engorged, then the pulmonary arteries can't empty normally and they become swollen and engorged. So we have high pulmonary artery pressure in patients who have heart failure. And then we can keep going further backward. If the pulmonary artery pressure is high, then that means the pressure in the right ventricle is going to get high. And if that's high, then that means the pressure in the right atrium is going to get high. So if you have an image in your mind of how the low cardiac output leads to high pressures in all these chambers, that is enormously helpful for understanding the physiology of heart failure. Now, what I just did in that exercise was go backwards from the left ventricle to the chambers that come before it. But now let's go forwards and think about what happens. So when the cardiac output gets low, this leads to low blood pressure. Remember that your blood pressure is determined by the combination of your cardiac output and your total peripheral resistance. The low blood pressure triggers two systems to respond. We get increased activity of the sympathetic nervous system, and we get increased activity of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Apologies for my messy writing here. These two systems both have ways that they can cause arteriolar vasoconstriction. The sympathetic system does this directly. The RAS does this through angiotensin II. But as a result of both of these systems getting activated, you will see a rise in total peripheral resistance in patients who have heart failure. And if you don't know this, total peripheral resistance is also sometimes called systemic vascular resistance. The two terms mean the same thing. So in anyone who has heart failure, you're going to expect these two systems to be activated and the total peripheral resistance to be high. And it's super high yield to know that. You should also know that in addition to raising the TPR, these two systems, the sympathetic system and the RAS, will increase the uptake of sodium and water by the kidneys. So the kidneys are going to be excreting less sodium and water, retaining more sodium and water. And this is what leads to the fluid overload that you see in heart failure patients. They have all this edema in their lung tissue, in their legs, their neck veins are swollen. This is all from these two systems being activated, causing retention of sodium and water. So what we've just done in this brief video is, first of all, go backwards from the low cardiac output. That's what I first did, talking about all the pressures going up. And then I went forwards from the low cardiac output to talk about how that leads to low blood pressure and activation of a response from the body. And that concludes our high yield review of the physiology of heart failure.